Hello friends and subscribers, welcome back to Daniel's Tech World after our one year hiatus. I do apologize for vanishing going AWOL from the YouTube world. Uh, not only this uh, little side initiative channel that I uh, began, also my main channel, I have not uploaded for such a long time. Uh, life got really busy in January, I was preparing for a big sort of work thing starting from the new year and uh hasn't really kind of let up since and i just haven't really had time to make videos so i miss them and i just got my new uh linux distro set up so i'm i'm back in action to some extent i can do videos again so i'll be doing some more um i want to also say uh that um i hate to not keep my word and i did undertake the beginnings of an experiment about last year aging uh, optical media and much to my amusement and surprise I get the odd email from someone usually in Switzerland why, why are people in Switzerland so into optical media uh, but they are I guess they're preppers like me kindred spirits and they say oh Daniel uh, when, when are you going to take in those discs and uh, look at the discs so the answer is it's going to happen very soon the discs are in I took them in two weeks ago and I conducted a preliminary inspection of the discs I can tell you, firstly, it's quite interesting. Definite price correlation evident. The cheaper the media, the worse condition they are. The M discs are holding up not badly. And um, I'm going to, all that's holding me back now, I'm trying to find a really old CD player that I cannot worry about damaging because the discs are in such bad condition that I think they actually might ruin uh, perfectly good and very nice uh, Pioneer hardware that I have. So uh, I will get that and we will do the analysis. Uh, today what I'm going to do is bring you guys into the rabbit hole of large language models uh, for um, anyone who has followed the odd thing I post on Twitter. I've been really, really doing a huge amount of work with LLMs this year, I would say since about February. And weirdly, it kind of became part of my job to do this. Uh, began using them for data analysis, data mining, um, data visualization, uh, sentiment prediction, really, really a huge amount of use cases for LLMs beyond the ChatGBT stuff that everyone is uh, exploring, me equally. It's amazingly great for that, but it can do so much more. And one of the first things I think that really swayed me over to, wow, these are actually really, really breakthrough tools was the first time I used an LLM for code generation. It was a YAML script for um, for Home Assistant. I didn't expect it to work. And when it did, I said, okay, this is something quite, quite, uh, quite game changing because I can just code a Python script for anything basically, if I can get good enough for prompting. So what I thought I would do, I've been meaning to do this for a while now is record a video where I do exactly that, which is now something that is as routine as making a cup of coffee. I say, oh, I should uh, get a script to do that. Let's put it into a, you know, ChatGBT or Perplexity or uh, a local LLM or whatever uh, the case may be. So I uh, right now have a script I need to do or want to cook up. So I'm going to show you guys the process of prompting a large language model to generate a little simple utility, but it is pretty cool that it could do this. So let's give it a shot. Okay, so this is the project and just want to say at the very outset, I've absolutely no idea if this is going to work or not. Like I haven't tested this. Uh, so uh, what I'm going to do is create a try to create with an LLM a little utility. And my objective is that it's going to go through my Git repositories and it's going to see if there is a old repo. Is if the if the repository doesn't have a remote URL, uh, then it's a dead repo. It is old and it's just on my local and it can be deleted and I'll be able to find what I need. So what I'm going to do a little bit ironically is create a uh, new GitHub repository for this little project. I'm going to call it uh, old repo cleaner and I'm using Git Kraken, not a promotion for them. I really, really love it. Amazing GitHub client. So if anyone wants to actually check out the source code that I created or the LLM created in this video, you can go ahead and do so. So I'm gonna create this repo and let's get working now on our utility. Okay, so welcome to VS Code. Um, I love the fact, by the way, that Microsoft make the best IDE for Linux in the year 2024. I think that's really cool. It's really exciting. I don't like the whole 
adversarial Linux uh, Microsoft stuff. I think that's really kind of old fashioned. Uh, so I, I love VS Code, it's amazing. And uh, what I want to um, show you guys really in this thing or the workflow that I'm trying to kind of encourage if you're doing code generation with an, uh, you know, this way. Firstly, do you, you don't actually need to use the web UI, right? ChatGBT, Perplexity, Gemini.Google.com. You can totally skip that and actually run your uh, code generation prompts, get the scripts and then execute them. You can do everything in the IDE if you want to. There are extensions for that. I personally don't because firstly, my Python programming skills just aren't that wonderful. And secondly, because I think there is still a lot of benefit from a web UI in the sense that you can iterate very quickly, like do this script, oh no, change that, mm, debug this. Whereas, you know, you could run those prompts in the IDE, but I don't really feel a need to. Uh, irrespective of how you choose to operate, something I do uh, do and recommend people do is I just start out a little scaffold. I have a scaffolding script that I never remember to use, but I just kind of populate my folders, prompts, output. And uh, this is really, I would say, the kind of foundation of, uh, you know, prompt engineering or prompting, trying to get replicable good results versus just casually typing them in is the process of kind of really thinking, okay, how am I going to write this? And the other advantage of recording your prompts in this manner in a repository, some kind of a structure, is that if you want to try it on another LLM, you have your prompt. You don't need to, um, you don't need to write the whole thing again. And as, as we hopefully will see here, the prompts can be pretty, uh, you know, dense and they take a while to write. So if you can just reuse those or combine snippets, it makes this process so much easier. So what I'm going to do is, uh, as I said, uh, my objective is that I want this thing to go through my Git repositories on my computer. This is where they are in my computer, home Daniel Git, please don't hack me. Um, and I'm going to just write the prompt as I would. Now it's not quite natural language. It's, you know, a little bit more specific than that, but I just try to be avoid redundancy and be very clear. So I'm going to say, by the way, I always use please. And I know people are like against that. It's a habit that I can't really break. And it just feels respectful. They're so helpful. These LLMs, I'm like, I'm going to use manners, but just, just for today, I will, I will, I will not. Um, so here we go. Generate. So this is kind of, I would say the baseline for my code generation prompt. Um, for sure, you know, it needs a bit of work. It's not perfect, but it should be good enough to get a first iteration, which is really kind of all we need at this point. So I'm going to say uh, generate a GUI that does the following. Now, the key I find so far in all this prompting stuff, and especially for code gen prompting, is to really kind of think, is there anything that it's going to not know or that'll, that'll, you know, it won't have that context and that will make the script not work. And if so, I need to specify that. So generate a GUI that does the following. Well, I, as I mentioned, use Linux and probably it's safe to assume most people don't, right? So I'm gonna actually say, generate a GUI that will work on the Linux desktop, open SUSE, um, and which will do the following. The kind of tricky thing about prompting is that you kind of want to strike that balance between giving it enough details and not giving it too many details that it's going to go off in a non-productive tangent thinking, oh, does this work on OpenSUSE? When if it's a Python script, it will probably work on most distros. I might have to remove that OpenSUSE thing, but for the moment, I'm going to specify the distro. So then I say iterate, iterate through this directory, recursing into every subdirectory. Now, uh, I have all my repos at one level. If you had you know, a nested folding folder structure, I might add iterate through recurse through all the subdirectories, you know, iteratively, I'd use that word, but as I don't, I'm just going to say recurse and I'm going to give it the path so that it can hard code my path into the script. So I'm just trying to do everything so that the script is going to run out of the box. This is a real path. Each folder is a GitHub repository. Some repositories belong to old remote repositories, which no longer exist. Now, this is kind of where there's a little bit of thought um, or there's different approaches you can use. For example, I was going to say the way to, the, here's the command to find the remote repo URL. If that does not return anything, you can assume it's an old repo and delete it. But if I did that, then I'm kind of limiting the LLM to just use the way I think is the best way to achieve this but the LLM might have better ideas. So rather than doing a bit of an elaborate prompt saying, here's my idea, you might have a better one. If so, do this. 
I'm just going to kind of leave it more open-ended and say, uh, this is, it's actually, this is quite open-ended. It's saying you're the boss. Here's what I want you to do. Figure out the best way to figure out, to detect if these repositories are old. So your tasks are to programmatically determine if this repository is linked to an old repo. And if so, delete the repository. Now this is a little bit risky as a script goes. We're living on the wild side, guys. Just be a little bit careful if you're thinking you're running a script like this or using this as an example. Make sure that you have a backup that you don't delete good code in case this does not work out as you hoped. Okay, and the other thing that I'm gonna say is please conclude displaying a confirmation message using this format, script run. So this is just, again, these are these little things that you learn from trial and error. When you're doing this process, you use an LLM to make a script. You say, did it run? It didn't have any confirmation. Okay, so now I need to put that confirmation into the script, a failure confirmation. And depending on how long I wanna make this video, I could go through iterative prompting flows on CodeGen. One of the ones I love to do actually is take the first version of a script, uh, feed it back to the LLM as context and say, uh, this is the first version. What features do you think are missing? Like make it better. Like, you know, what, what could be improved here? And it actually works. It, uh, depending on the model will, uh, frequently say, oh yeah, why don't you put like a button here? Stuff you didn't think of. And again, amazing stuff, but let's keep it simple for V1. Um, sometimes it will generate really, really ugly programs. I usually don't care because they're just little, you know, utilities. Uh, here, this uh, part of the prompt where I say gener generate a GUI, just by the way, for Linux people, especially if you prefer working in the terminal, this word can be changed and you can just prompt like this, generate a CLI or generate a TUI. And you might want to specify terminal user interface if you prefer those tools. So one word can totally change um, the output of the prompt, which is pretty interesting, I think. You can say, maybe it doesn't actually even make sense to specify. Like just make it, make whatever you think is going to get this job done the easiest. Um, one thing I will say GUI versus CLI is that it's because of the way they are, I guess, uh, GUIs are a little bit more finicky. There's a greater chance they won't run. I sometimes find if I just do a CLI, it'll work more uh, reliably. So that's basically the prompt. And let's go and put this through an uh, LLM now. So my original plan was to use uh, perplexity just because it's what I'm using a lot these days, but I had a change of heart and I said, actually for this, for demonstrating this process, at least it probably makes sense to use ChatGBT 4.0, uh, 4.0 Turbo with Canvas, um, which uh, is very nice and is, as it says on the tin, uh, designed for code generation. Um, I've used, by the way, the some of the local uh, uh, local locally hosted LLMs for just really fine-tuned for programming, especially uh, Python fine-tunes. And I haven't had that really much of a difference or I found for Turbo kind of does a better job a lot of the time. So uh, it's just kind of what I tend to use. So what I'm gonna do now is literally just copy and paste my prompt into uh, the, into ChatGBT here. And let's see how it does on its first go. All right, so again, we're just kind of showing you guys again, the workflow that, that I think actually makes a lot of sense just because you know coding tends to be IDE centric, but you can really work on it in this way as well. So what I'm gonna do, this is V1 of my prompt, and I'm just gonna iterate, I'm gonna say prompt two, and I'm going to copy and paste the original prompt, but I'm gonna just change a few things based on what I saw um, in that first iteration. So I'm gonna say generate an attractive GUI that will work on Linux. So you know I'm just gonna try steer it away from creating that super basic thing that we just saw. Iterate through this directory, recursing into every subdirectory. That is okay. Each folder is a GitHub repo. Some repositories programmatically determine, probably don't need the word programmatically. It is a script, so I'm going to take that out. Determine if this repository is linked to an old repo. Now, there's little things in language that can seem very obvious to you or me, but which may not be easy for an LLM to interpret. So, uh, linked might be, uh, so I might sometimes do something like this, determine if this repo is linked to an old repo. Um, linked, linked means that the local repository does not have a remote, remote re repository because it has been deleted. So I'm just trying to reduce the ambiguity there a little bit. Um, and if so, again, that's a little bit loose. So I'm gonna actually specify that. So if that is the case, delete the local repository. Now, what I'm going to do, I mentioned that I didn't like the fact that it just kind of 
didn't show what was going on. Uh, so I'm going to, going to describe what I want to see in the UI. The UI should include a uh, terminal output which displays um, a verbose output showing what the script is doing. Yeah, I guess that's it really. I just want to see some output. So some, this is uh, something I like to put in the, my Python GUI prompts is to just say there should be a terminal there so I can see exactly what's going on. Um, so this might be confusing because in the logic of Python, it might be saying this is an interrupt before. So I'm going to say instead of saying before, conclu before concluding, I'm going to say instead, after you have finished deleting the empty repositories, display a confirmation, confirmation message using this format. And sometimes I add like uh, go uh, reset the G the UI so the user can do it again. In this case, not so applicable because you don't need to do this more than once at a run, presumably. So that's a V2 of my prompt. And I'm going to just run this again. Um, let's try GBT one more time. And if that doesn't work, let's switch over to uh, Claude. You just see, um, yeah, V2. Let's give this guy a go now. Program. No, I called it GUI.py. Okay, well, step one. Is it better looking than V1? Mm, not so sure. But uh, it has a new button. Uh, it says start cleaning now. And it's got the terminal output here as we requested. So here we go. Okay, so um, yeah, it's you can see that it has actually recursed through all the repositories. Uh, but it has determined that there is a remote for everyone. So I'm just gonna actually kind of start from scratch again, which means I'm gonna just do a new chat and not use that, let that fall out of context naturally. Um, but that's okay. Sometimes I think it's just easier to start from scratch. So I'm just gonna, because it's giving the LLM less stuff to work through, right? So I'm just gonna say here, this is a script <clears throat> I wrote telling a fib uh, that is designed to do the following. Uh, the intended function is to identify these and then delete them. Now you could actually make the script a bit gentler, like it is running, but it is not identical. So again, the, the trick here is being very, very specific, exactly what is not working. It is running, but it is not identifying empty repositories. Can you diagnose and debug, then return the full updated script. Now, this is something that I put in, return the full updated script, because I frequently find that, you know, sometimes it'll say just change one, two, three, four, five, six things. And by the time you go through each of the changes one by one, you're like, maybe you could have just given me the script back. So uh, this is something that I find you have to be explicit about requesting that it gives you uh, a new version. So I'm just going to add that in and let's see what happens if I feed this into perplexity. Okay, so V3, it finally succeeded. Uh, the script was run and I watched it delete three repositories, which isn't bad, one we know about, and I guess two that I kind of held on my system. That makes sense to me that those are the ones, and you can see it's recursed through everything else. So that's pretty much it. We now have a functional Python GUI for deleting old repositories, old GitHub repositories you might have sticking around your computer, and if you're uh, been doing this longer than I have, you might have dozens or, you know, you know, a lot more than that uh, repositories that you don't need confusing you. Anyway, the bigger picture is that that is how easy it is uh, to make a GUI, a Python GUI, just using a large language model, not even using a code, you know, one of these code pilot, copilot attachments, simply uh, formulating prompts, running them into um, a web UI and getting the GUI back and then getting something useful. I've used this approach to make backup utilities, uh, sync clients, syncing stuff up to the cloud. And basically it works uh, predictably well, which is pretty cool. I hope this is interesting. If you're interested in web development, Python development, or just this whole new frontier of using natural language to define stuff for LLMs to do, I hope this was useful. If you know of better ways to do this, better prompting strategies, etc do feel free to uh, reach out and uh, suggest those too. Thanks for watching and until the next one, have a good day.